We have got an episode of Driving with G with the infamous Blair Walsh. Oh man. How you doing, bro? Good. How are you doing? Good, bro. We're rolling right now, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be rolling. <laughs> Uh, anywhere you want to go? I mean, this is your day off. Is there any places that you like to go? Any errands that you like to run? You tell me, man. I got dry cleaning to pick up later, but that's too boring for right now. No, man, let's go to the dry cleaner. Is it close around here? No. Is it in Bellevue? Yeah. Why? No, it's just dry. <laughs> that's cool. Man, Blair, okay, first of all, can we we need to get some music while we're going to be rolling, man. So what are we going to be listening to? Can you hook us up with something? Uh, well, we were talking about earlier. I like Darius Rucker's new album. Darius Rucker. Yep. You know, sometimes folks, you know, back in the day at some point, they say, oh, gee, you kind of look like Darius Rucker. But, hey, he's been out in the game. He wasn't in country before. I remember back when I was in high school in the mid-90s. The Hootie days? Yeah, Hootie the Blowfish. Yeah. And now, I mean, he's kind of changing the game with uh, country music. He's definitely changing the style of country music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, have you, are you a country music fan? What's your deal on that? I like it. Um, I have very eclectic music taste, though. I like anything. Like we were talking about earlier, I mean, hell, Taylor Swift's new song. I like that, too. Taylor Swift? You know how to sing the words? No. Oh. We uh. talked about it. Musically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, where, where are you from, bro? I'm from South Florida, Booker Tone. Um, played Georgia. Now I'm here. All right, so okay, let's tell, take us back to them days, man. So what happened? You started playing football. How in the world did you start playing football, or did it go from soccer to football? What happened? Soccer to football. I've never actually played a position in football. Uh, I've only ever been a kicker. And halfway through high school, I just decided I wanted to switch, try it out. Kind of got hooked on kicking a football and the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. Just took it off from there. Were you good right away? You seem like the type that when you right soon as you got to kicking that football, yeah, like, yeah, he was money, huh? Yeah, I mean you had the the talent, but I needed to be refined. My form needed to be refined, so I just I spent the next six months kind of just getting trained and figuring it out, and then that's when the college just kind of got interested and went from there. So I mean, so if, if I'm a kicker out there in the world, you said that's how the colleges got interested. I mean, what do you mean? Like, I mean, did you kick in front of somebody? Like, how did the colleges find out about you so fast? Uh, well, back then they had these recruiting camps that college that college coaches could come to, and uh, we would do those. And it's kind of like a showcase to showcase your ability and talents and show off. And I like doing that. And yeah, I'd be I'd be moving coaches aside to kick from the sideline so they could hear hear the sound. I mean, I I was doing anything. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, and you got to be confident if you want to get looked at. Yeah, yeah that's that, that's a very good point. Confidence is key. Speaking of, of confidence and, and, and being a kicker, first of all, I just want to tell you, man, I can't kick. Matter of fact, most people can't kick. I mean, <laughs> even the greatest athletes uh, cannot kick a football. Um, how much still does confidence play into when it comes to kicking? It's huge. I think just like in any other position, it's all trust. If you trust yourself, your swing, your your practice, your ability, uh, you can be as successful as you want to be. Um, for kicking, it's it, the massive thing is to just do the same thing over and over and over again. Right. And the more consistent you can be at it, the more successful you are. All right, so you're from Boca Raton, Florida. You obviously went to college in Georgia. Uh, you got into the league. Um, I know some of your past the different football teams that you had played with. Where do you Where do you live in off season? I'm in Newport Beach, California, so I'm kind of a little bit south of LA. Oh, yeah. okay, a little Newport. I'm more West Coast, yep. You move all, oh yeah, that's all the extreme West. <laughs> why, why California? Why that? Just grew up going there as a kid, and um, you know, my brother now works in downtown LA, and my sister goes to school there, and uh, my significant other's in, that, in there, so can't beat it. Significant other, okay, yeah. how'd you guys meet? She was interning in Minnesota for a news station, and uh, you know, back when I played for Minnesota, I just kind of said, hey. <laughs> Now, I want to get the elephant out of the room, because I'm one of those people, I'm very transparent, my man. I'm no, very not you. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, when I first found out that you are coming to Seattle, I was just like, oh, there's no way. And I remember you did your first interview with John Clayton. That's my buddy, you know John Clayton. Yep. You did your interview with him, and you were talking. And I said, I don't know. I don't think this guy has the confidence. Oh, jeez. I don't think this guy has the confidence in the world. And so I had all of these this strong opinion about you, man. And oh, I kind of know why. But then you've come here, and I'm completely, was completely wrong. First of all, yes, you're a great kicker. You're a great kicker. But, man, do you have some style. Before we talk about the kicking, you know, <laughs> and things that you went through before that with that, 
where did you get all this style, man? Like, I see your suit game is on point. You wear some dope shoes. You got clothes. When did you get into style? Well, I'm lucky. Everything fits me off the rack. So I'm a pretty normal sized dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just liked it. I kind of got into it three or four years ago and just trying to find the new trends. And I mean, nothing extravagant, just simple, the, you know, good fitting, good looking clothes and shoes. I've always been into the shoe thing. So. Okay. Uh, I feel like that fits me being a kicker, but um, yeah. Now, when you talk about style, one of one of my favorite as far as style, he always says easy all the time. Is Nico Thorpe? Matter of well, fact, he I has his own language. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you think that you can get away with dressing like Nico Thorpe? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I would. Right. But, uh, he pulls it off, but I think I can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> Could you get away with dressing like John Ryan? No, no, I couldn't. John's got his own style. Yeah, sometimes he looks like he just got done singing at a concert, you know, a grunge band. And right. Sometimes he looks like he walked off the cover of GQ. I just, I don't know which way he's going, so. Is John Bryan kind of grumpy sometimes? Okay, explain John Bryan. I've known him for years. Is he, what's he like? First of all, he's the best. I mean, he's such a good veteran to have around, but John is very funny, and I don't think people realize that. He's naturally just a funny guy, and he'll say stuff and his mannerisms, and you'll just... Most of the time, he has me and Tyler Ott, our long snapper, just laughing all the time. <laughs> now, okay, so I've been around guys when, like fans, or not necessarily fans, but people who don't know them, they'll say, hey, so what do you do? And most of the time, nobody says, I'm a football player. You know, some of them say, oh, you know, I work for the Seahawks or something like that. Then they might kind of assume. In your experience, when folks ask you what you do, what do you tell them? I tell them I play in the NFL. I mean, that's really you, you, what it is. You, you tell them that? Yeah. You, you don't say, I, you know, I work for the Seahawks? No. Do I you? tell them I play in the NFL because then if they really want to know more, then I'll go into more detail. If they don't, they'll figure it out. Uh, what's, yeah. what's some of it, like when you tell them you play in the NFL, has anybody ever asked you if you play linebacker or something? No, I think the first question is that you get like the eyes that look you literally from the head to toe. <laughs> like, what do you possibly do? <laughs> I give them that answer, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tell them why not. I, I did have a cover though. If we were in public and in a bar or in a situation where you're around people that you don't really want to let them know, I always told them I worked for Best Buy because that was uh, they were based in Minneapolis. So I was like, hey, I think people believe that I look like a guy who could work a regular job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have some ideas on probably what you would. Do. I wouldn't say Best Buy. I just I, it was the first thing I thought of, and then I started using it. You look like a real estate agent, bro. I don't know. I look like somebody who has a normal job not yeah, a, that, yeah. that doesn't use their body to play <laughs> a sport. Yeah. What's the hardest you've ever been hit on the football? Have you ever been hit on a football field? Yeah. Uh, Devin Hester spun me around with his shoulder one time, which was not very good. But I, it, I ended up getting the tackle because he went down. So, I mean, I, I tackled one of the greatest returners of all time, but uh, he hit me pretty damn hard. Where, did you get some love from your teammates? I did, yeah, because it was the end of the game, too. And if they had scored, it would have been over. Oh, it was a return, man. yeah. Do you, do you think that you'll be telling that story for the rest of your life? That you? I mean, I do. Yeah, I tackled Devin Hester and we saved the game. So yeah. <laughs> now, what are, what are the things? So since you've been here, what do you what do you like so far about Seattle? Everything. I think the the cool thing about Seattle is there's so many different parts of Seattle. I mean, you could literally go down into the city and have the whole down by the water experience. I live in Bellevue, which is like a smaller city. Uh, you can go way out by Mount Rainier and have all the camping and hiking. And so there's just very many, there's a lot of things to do, I should say. Um, the weather since I've been here has been good. I know it's about to get a little cold and rainy, but yeah, um, it's also beautiful. I mean, heck, you see all these hills and trees and water. It's just, it's very scenic. Yeah, very, very true. So when you got here to Seattle, it's fair to say that, uh, I mean, you know, so you've, you've heard of some of these personalities that are on this team. Yeah. The big personalities. Who on this team that you met and is actually, you kind of feel the opposite of what you maybe thought before you got here? It's a good question. It's not necessarily the opposite, but for me, the guy that is maybe portrayed to be a little bit different than he is, is probably Sherman. Uh, you meet Richard and you're like, this is one of the nicest guys ever. And he's one of the most sincere guys. And he'll ask you about your day and how you're doing. And you know, that's not very common in this society. Uh, and so for me, Richard's personality that's portrayed is that he's kind of standoffish and very opinionated, but he's genuinely just a really nice dude. Yeah, I, I, I can kind of agree with you on that. Um, you know, I, mean, I, I guess I 
I know take this opportunity to kind of ask you like during your your roughest time or or at least as it might seem for me the roughest time when during the whole kick thing in Minnesota till now what's some of the what's some of the biggest lessons that you've learned behind all that man uh, just you, you kind of learn who's in your close circle even more. Um, the guy, the people that love you no matter what. I mean, heck, like we talk about all the time, it's just sports. And uh, yeah, it was a moment in my career that I'm not proud of. But you know, like I was, like I would say to your earlier comment, you didn't like me when I signed here. You probably didn't do your homework. You, you know, I'm pretty good. Um, and that's how I view myself, and that's how I treat myself. And uh, so it's been it's been awesome experience playing here so far, and the culture here, and everything about it's just been exactly what uh, I imagined. Well, I mean, I ain't, I, I, I used to just be a car detail guy, man. I ain't the smartest sometimes. Hey, I was wrong about Bobby Wagner. Uh, I was wrong. Like when I first met Richard Sherman, I thought he was a loud mouth and there's no way in the world that he was going to be as good as he thought he was. So I was he's wrong about that. Best, yeah. and, and to be honest with you, just earlier today, I just wrote an apology letter to Russell Wilson for being wrong about him. So Well, hey, that makes you a man because you can admit when you're wrong. Man, yes. There you go. That's all. That's what it's that's all, all about. That that's all it's So when you... You got free time when you're here in Seattle, and you're not obviously kicking field goals and practicing at the uh, VMAC. What are you doing on your free time around here? Here, it's probably a lot of eating. I like all the restaurants around here. Really? <laughs> yeah. You wait, you? I yeah. bet. You know what? I bet I you got a hard. big. I'm you got hard. a big appetite, don't you? I do. I yeah. knew it. Because we Why work out so hard, man. man. You work out to eat, right? Isn't that, isn't that the old saying? Yeah, but it's not working for me, bro. I mean, I'm working out a lot, and I'm eating a lot. <laughs> Different kind of deal. But you, I bet you probably could out-eat me, and you're probably... Probably. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what's, some, what's some good foods that's out here? I mean, I'm sure you've been liking, not necessarily the restaurant, but the seafood out here. Seafood's great. The sushi out here is great, which is very surprising. Um, mm -hmm. I just, everything. I mean, I, I find a new restaurant every other week that I'm like, man, that place is ridiculous. Right. It's cool. Yeah, there are some, some definitely some some good restaurants. How do they treat you inside the VMAC, man? How's the love there? I mean, big, you know, you know Big Stu, right? Yeah. Yeah, Big Stu, yeah. one of the cooks up there. Is, yeah. he, is he cool? Stu's the man, yeah. Uh, funny, always going to give it back to you if you give it to him. <laughs> now, do, do, Which does, I he, like. does he make you any breakfast burritos? No, I'm really simple. He does make me egg whites because I don't like regular eggs. Um, okay. All right, so nothing wrong with that. that. He makes me that every morning, so in that regards, he treats me right. And I just said, want to say for the record, I like I like real egg whites. I don't like the egg whites out of the container. Are you, you going to separate them yourself, though? That's what I'm saying. I'm too lazy. Yeah, no, you just got to get them out of the container. <laughs> free, range, free range, though, right? Oh, free range. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Free free range for sure. I'm just I'm just absolutely uh, too lazy. Um, talk to me about CenturyLink, man. I mean, like, I hear everybody has a different... I mean, everybody says it's crazy playing in front of the 12s at CenturyLink. I want to get your perspective and your view of what it's like to play there because you've played there both as an opponent and of course now uh, as a part of the Seahawks. It's one of those places when we were we would come here and, and play the, uh, the Seahawks that you just knew you're gonna have such a tough time even being competitive in the game because they're so good at home. Um, crowds really loud, obviously. Third down's impossible for the uh, you know for the offense. Um, it's so much nicer to be on the other side, though. Uh, just the experience of not having to deal with the noise when you're performing is right. really nice. Um, but how about as a as a okay, going back to what you being an opponent, would they scream and yell when you would go to try to kick? Oh, always, yeah. Even one of our assistant coaches, Heath Farwell, used to get on me every time we played uh, Seattle. He would make sure he let me know and just jump around and try to distract me. So, yeah. <laughs> does does that sometimes work with kickers? The, 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 the fans going crazy? Not the fans necessarily. I would say more, uh, you know, when you have just weird interactions on the field, like guys will come up and, and trash talk you, and it's a little weird, but um, it doesn't really affect what you're doing. All right. I'm glad you just said the trash talk because <laughs> I had that right there. All right. I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. I need top three, bro. I need top three trash talkers that you've ever played against in the NFL. Somebody that's came up to you and made it personal to you, came up to you, and had some choice words for you to say, for, for, to say to you, so that you would miss the kick. Okay, not trash talking, because this dude's a genuinely a good guy, but he would definitely make it known that he wanted me to miss, was, we played against him all the time, Tim Jennings from, from Chicago. Yeah, We're yeah. both Georgia guys, so he would always be like, all right, you're, you're missing this one, or you're coming off the edge, so that was always interesting to me. Okay. Um, and then I had a couple teammates, as you know, that trash talked me in the preseason, which was a little weird. 
but um, there hasn't been one guy that stood out that like has said choice words because I think most people look at kickers and like are we gonna leave alone. So when it comes to that, not a ton. Do guys leave kickers alone? The opposing teams mostly, yeah. I mean, you don't really. I think the longer you've been in the league and the more success you've had, you get a little more respect. I mean, they're not gonna sit there and yell at you. Um, if you're a rookie though, you'll get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's hard for a rookie to make his way. It's no different. doubt, yeah. Especially when they know if you've had a bad game, you'll you'll hear other D linemen that are trying to rush you and tell you, "Oh, yeah, remember last week?" And you're like, "Man, this guy was paying attention to that." Right. <laughs> now, something about it. I don't know what the statistic is, but when coaches call timeout before they go to make go to make that kick, is that is that tough sometimes? Only because it can maybe throw off your rhythm. Um, sometimes it's nice because if you haven't had an attempt in the game, I think that's the only time it gets tricky uh, because then that's your first attempt and you're having to stay out there longer, which is weird. Right. But outside of that, it shouldn't really mess with much of what you're doing. I mean, once the whistle blows for real, you should just treat it like a regular kick. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a very good point. So when it comes to uh, teammates, have you, have you ever had a teammate get mad at you? Over the years? No, no. You never had a teammate just look at you like, man, are you kidding me? Nope. No. <laughs> I've been fortunate. I've had really good teammates, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody, huh? Nobody's really, no. Yeah, I mean, because I would think that, I mean, it's just one of those. Okay, here's one for you. I, I've always wanted to ask this of a kicker, right? <laughs> when that time does, and by the way, I think you've only missed like one kick all year. Like, you've been unbelievable. Um, What's that walk like? After you've kicked the kick, you've missed it. The walk from off from on the field to off the field. Is that like the longest walk ever? Well, it's the worst part of our job, no doubt, because then uh, you don't know when the next one's coming. Uh, the, what you want to have happen is you get a me an immediate uh, shot again to go redeem yourself, but you don't know when the next opportunity's coming. So that's the worst part of what we do. Yeah, right there. Man, I, I always think about that, man, because I'm just saying, like, it's one of those deals. Like, And, and one, thing, one thing about kickers, you guys are – I would say that you are as underappreciated as the offensive line. And what I mean by that is, is if it's a fantastic game and the score, you guys win, the, the, your team wins 12 to 9, and there were all field goals, they'll just talk about how great the defense was in that situation. Yep. They'll never be like, hey, hey, the kicker was 4 for 4. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, you, but we do talk about you if you miss that one comes to the territory man i mean if you're really if you're in this game to be praised you're you probably shouldn't be playing it i mean it's just you gotta you gotta realize that there's a bigger concept and that's the team and that may sound corny but it's the truth um as a kicker you just there'll be your moments you'll get your moments where you have the game winners or you have the play where you're pretty much deciding it but you know it's very rare that you're going to get the credit or or be noticed for it yeah when you got the call to possibly be coming to seattle to sign here what was that like well, it was awesome. I mean, this was the first visit I had lined out when I was ready to kind of go start that process again. And um, the moment I walked in the building, I was like, man, I want to, let's, let's make this work. How long did it take you to realize that you wanted the relationship to begin with the Seahawks? Tell the truth. Uh, I mean, the moment I got on the plane to come here, I just was like, I had been to Seattle before and I had seen the culture that was here, but hadn't obviously experienced it. And uh, it just, it looked like it was going to be the best scenario for me. And so I wanted it to happen. Oh man, so you was an easy. So they didn't even have to wine and dine you. You no, were you no. were saying yes on the plane. No, I'm a, I'm I'm simple. Man. Oh, so so you got here, you were gonna make the deal. Okay, but what is it? What is it that stood out about Seattle? Was it is it Pete Carroll? Is it uh Richard Sherman? Is it the, the team? Is it the fans? What? Is it the sushi? <laughs> uh all of the above. But <laughs> one of the things that stood out to me, and somebody said I forget who said it to me, um they don't focus on what you can't do here. They focus on what you can do, and they try to make you do that to the maximum. And I think that's really cool, and uh, it brings out the best in guys, and I think that's what makes them different than other teams. They're not gonna nitpick on, on your weaknesses. They're really gonna they're gonna find your strengths and say, hey man, how can we use your strengths to help us win? And that's a really unique way to look at it, and uh, it's been really successful here, and I think it will continue to be successful here as long as that's implemented. You know who never gets a lot of credit, and I mean, they don't talk about them because, I mean, yes, to be honest, nobody really talks about special teams. You only talk about special teams when something bad happens. Correct. Your coach, Brian yeah. Schneider, he's a beast, man. Tell us about him. Great guy. Uh, his coaching style is unique, and he gets the best out of his players because I think 
players trust him. They trust where he's been, what he's done, um, and the schemes that he's, he's creating are perfect. And, I mean, you got guys that are going all-out effort for him. And you don't see that a lot, or a lot around the league. I mean, it's just special teams is a tough position to coach because you don't, you don't always have the availability of guys. If guys get injured, all of a sudden your best special teams player is now playing defense or right. he's playing offense and you can't use him. Um, right. So you always have to be willing to just – make stuff up on the go when it comes to personnel and I mean he's fantastic at it and uh, I think you see that year in and year out we're ranked at the top for a reason yeah definitely that um let's get off football a little bit um let's go into the um how you, you, you met your significant other she was interning or something like that or was she interning am I right yeah she was interning yeah okay she was she was interning okay um, she's a sports uh, broadcaster a sports yeah. broadcaster okay so uh I'm really terrible when it comes to uh, first date situations. Uh, so what happened? I mean, did you just say, hey, my name's Blair Walsh? <laughs> you know, t- well, t- I saw t- her on the field, and I was just like, man, this this girl's really attractive. And, All right. Uh, kind of, you know, I'm in my element, so I can be confident. And uh, even more confident than I am, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I knew you were going to get Yeah! <laughs> Our first date was in training camp, though, man. It, I mean, your your options are limited a little bit. I'm in the middle of this, uni, you know, Minnesota State University, uh-huh. kind of out there, and um, I think we went to like an arcade for our first date because that's really the only free time we had. Was that's really all there was? Time out. Yeah. Time out. Yep. Blair Walsh <laughs> goes to an arcade for the first date. First of all, it was dinner, and then and then that because we were trying to figure oh, out what bro, to do. Look, man. If anything, I'm giving you credit. I think that's real, real nice, man. There you go, dude. So, would you the box. would you recommend somebody out there that's watching this right now to take someone to the arcade for a first date? Yeah, if you got if you got the swag and confidence, yeah, do it. Okay. It won't matter. I, it won't matter where you go. That's what you got to realize. Does not matter where you go. <laughs> All right. First date ideas. Going for coffee. Good idea. If you want to keep it casual, really casual, yeah. It's really casual. Yeah. Um, going to a movies, good idea. No, I the to me the movie thing is tough because you don't talk. You don't talk for two hours. I agree. I agree. Um, let's see. Uh, out to dinner for a first date. I mean, that's the most classic and traditional. But if you pick the right spot and if you think there's enough privacy in the place, mm-hmm. it can work. Should you bring flowers on the first date? A little much. A little much. And I'm a gentleman, too. That's a little much, though. Flowers on the first date is a little eager. Okay. Here's something that I've been realizing. Now, I know in the movies, you're supposed to go and open up the door on the first date. Now, in my opinion, I feel like maybe old school cars where you come and you unlock the door. But because we got the little chirp deal, we can just unlock our cars. What's your take on opening up the door still for the lady in a car i think if you're coming from the side that she's getting in on you can do it i'll do that occasionally okay how about the other side coming from the driver's side if you're coming from the driver's side i think it's a little weird to walk around open it and then walk back around it's not it's not that you're not a gentleman there's other general things you can do but the car door thing you're right is kind of it's in the past all right who pays on the first date (laughs) i'm terrible about this i always pay that's what i try to do and my significant other Sarah fights me on it, so uh, she wants to pay too. But all right, I feel like the guy should always pay. Okay, so what if he or she, or what if she, if you don't say you're the man, what if she says, "Hey, you want to go half on this?" Is that a trick question? When she kind asks, of. "Do you want to go half?" I always feel like that's a trick question. It's a trick question, kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a trick question. All right, so we talked about music, man. You were supposed to hook up the music. You said you like Darius Rucker. We didn't get to that because I was talking running my mouth so much. You love, we love Darius Rucker. Uh, you listen to little country music. Uh, how about rap music? You ever listen to rap music? I do listen to rap music, yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's whatever's popular. I don't have a specific favorite. Like, I have to listen to that guy. Um, now, when you go to maybe, like, if you're out and about, will you actually dance, Blair? I've been known to dance at some, uh, some Halloween parties and some Christmas parties, but... It's never very pretty. I mean, I can, I can, I got a little rhythm, but it's not. You see some other guys dancing around me, and I'm like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> Does that matter sometimes? If you okay, as, as brings me to the next one. If you're out dancing on the dance floor, and there's other people that dance as bad as you, will, will that make you even stay longer? I don't. I 
I should correct myself. I don't think it's that I'm bad at dancing. I'm just not great at it. So therefore, you have to know when it's okay and when it's not okay. All right. Points in the night. Let's see how much confidence Blair has. Are you so confident that if a song comes on, you're really feeling it, and nobody's on the dance floor, will you go out there and dance by yourself? What time of the night is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not. No. <laughs> that is not my area. <laughs> Oh, man. Can you cook, man? Uh, a little bit. I like using that. Have you ever seen the sous vide thing where you put it into, in, into the water? It's like a stick. You put the food in the bag, and it cooks it up for you. No. Yeah, you control it through your phone. It's pretty, It's pretty like, revolutionary. Wait. You so can... you put whatever you want in a bag, and you put, like, the vegetables and the seasoning in this bag, yeah. seal it up, put it in water, and this stick that you put in the water kind of cooks it to the perfect temperature. Take it out. Sear it a little bit and you're you're good. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's that's impressive. Our long snapper introduced me to it. He can actually cook. Uh, Tyler Todd. Yeah, he can cook. He, he can cook. Yep. That's another position that nobody talks <laughs> about is the long snapper. So now that we brought up Tyler, this is a chance for you. What's let us know. What's Tyler Lock like? Speaking of confidence, he has confidence. Um, I mean, I think this is his third year maybe uh, in the league but you know he has that confidence of a veteran and, and we like that I know John and I like it and we appreciate it because he's done a great job um, he's one of those guys that's not afraid of the moment which is obviously something you need to have to play in the NFL but mm -hmm. you know he knows what he's good at and he sticks to it and he's been really consistent for us all year yeah I but mean, unfortunately you'll never get any credit as a long snapper because unless you have a bad snap nobody really notices that you're doing your job incorrectly one Hundred percent. Would you believe me if I told you I don't even know what Tyler looks like? You gotta know what he looks like, dude. He kind of looks like King Leonidas from Three Hundred with that beard. Okay. I'll I'll, let me let me be really honest. <laughs> I, have I seen Tyler before? Yes. Um, how do I know who he really is? Is when he's walking with you and John. Yeah. That, that that's the truth. That's I mean, terrible. <laughs> I ain't wanting to get on this show and just lie. I'm just telling the truth. I, but I know who he is, and he's doing a great job. And the reason why he's doing a great job because none of us are talking about him all season. Exactly. Like that's how you know it's a phenomenal job. Yeah. Hey, um, was that a was that game against uh, the Houston Texans? Houston Texans. Sorry, on Sunday. Was that one of the greatest regular season games you ever been a part of? Yeah, I was talking about it with my parents. My parents actually made their first trip out here yeah. to see it from Florida, six-hour flight. Um, so shout out to them. But, shout, uh, shout out to them. Did they live in Boca Raton? Yeah, to Joe and Karen. They took the six-hour flight back last night, actually. So, um, but I told them I was like, "That's the, that's one of the best games I've ever been in at any level. Ever. It just was. There were so many times you thought you'd won it, lost it, won it, lost it, and you know." It just came down to us just outwilling them, and, that, and that's really cool. You don't always see that at the professional level, that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So That was unbelievable. Let me ask you what your thoughts were on this. 137 left to play. Seahawks get the ball. Russell Wilson under center. No timeouts. What are your thoughts right then on that final drive? It's funny. I didn't worry about the time. Um, just from obviously, and I'm not involved in that play or those plays, but the moment we completed the long pass to what, down to, to like the 30? To, to, to Richardson, I think it was. Yeah, to Richardson, down to like the 30 or something. You thought so. we had action? I knew, it was, I knew it was over. I think we all did. Yeah, I just, with about 40 seconds left and we're at, at the 30 yard line, the way our offense had been all day and the way Russell's been throwing the ball, you kind of had that feeling like we're going to score here. So we were getting ready immediately for the, the extra point, and I mean, lo and behold, two plays later, we're in the end zone, and the rest is history. Man, man, that's uh, that's something. It's the fact that that you and probably others thought once he made that first pass that it was it was it was, it was over. Yeah, and that speaks a lot to our offense and Russell. I mean, you have so much confidence in him once he hits that big play, and he did it all day too. So it wasn't like it was something that was out of the norm. Um, I, yeah, I, I check this out. For me, for this for me, that's the best game I've ever seen Russell play. Uh well, his what was that was that his career high? 450, 52 or something like that. Oh, man, you might know better stats than I think me. it was, actually. They said it at the team meeting today. It was. It, it was the best the game. Seahawks franchise record. That's Best game I've ever seen him play. I mean, that's that's counting the NFC Championship, all that kind of good stuff. So, I, I, that was crazy. So, today's the, uh, Tuesday. What are you going to do the rest of the day, my man? Well, actually, today's Monday. 
Oh man. I don't know if I, I, would, I, I, know would. If I ruined the whole thing by this. Yeah, I to that's right. Well, Today's that's a Monday. We can cut this out, right? Nah, don't cut this out. Cut don't, it out. Th no, don't <laughs> cut it out. I like to make mistakes on in front of everybody. Well, I was going to give you the real answer and tell you that I'm going to watch Monday Night Football and relax, so now I have to change my answer. <laughs> and, uh... Wait, do you, do okay, you enjoy... Okay, it's Tuesday. You okay, know, it's Tuesday. Do you enjoy watching football? I do, because for me, I love the sport of football, um, and I just I have such an admiration for the game and the people that play it, and I love it. Every time we have a bye week, I'm watching football on Sunday, so I mean, I just like it. And I know a lot of guys are like, oh, I want to get away from it, but... I think if you really love it, you probably want to watch it too. Well, here's some things that I'm learning that I didn't. I'm learning about you. You watch a lot of football. Didn't know that. You're from Boca Raton, Florida. I didn't know that. It's no. It's by the way. It's no fun when you go on Wikipedia to look up somebody no. and, and try to. That's that's stupid. And, but maybe I should do better research. And then the next one. Blair, I didn't realize how much confidence and you got some confidence and <laughs> swag, my man. Well, now of the three. You must be. Are you the oldest of us? Of you and your, you, you, have, you, you said a brother and a sister. Old, I have an older brother and younger sister. Now I'm the middle child, dude. The neglected one, right? Isn't that, isn't that what the middle child are? <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, we man. always have the the, the, the uh, feeling like we're neglected or no one yeah. loves us, even though my parents do. <laughs> All right. So if your parents, if your parents were an, uh, answering these questions and they had to tell the truth, which one of you guys are the favorites? You gotta go the firstborn, my brother. Is he? Yeah, I mean, he he went to Harvard undergrad and you. Oh, school. for I mean, sure. Try being his younger brother. Yeah. Oh, what, fun, what's right? his name? Ryan. Ryan. Oh, Ryan, you special, bro. Ryan special. There's oh, no he went to Harvard. Anybody that goes to Harvard in the family is automatically, <laughs> you know, that's at yep. first. Okay. All right, and then there's only there's only one one girl, right? Yeah, younger sister. Okay, so she's definitely she was a spoiled one. And right? she's in the U.S. She's at law school right now in Los Angeles, Loyola. So she's also very smart. Man, your parents have done a good job oh, with y'all. Jo Joe and Karen are, are the best, so yeah. What's, I bet you Joe and Karen were the family in the neighborhood that always had the snacks, huh? Yeah, my dad. My dad's a dentist, and coming up on Halloween, the funny story is, is that he would always buy the full-size candy bars. That was his thing. It didn't matter. He would never give out fun size. It was always full-size candy bars, and everyone always laughed because your dad, the dentist, giving out sugar for your for, teeth. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. Of all the things that we talked about today, you telling me that your dad buys the full-size candy bars? Yep, full-size. Your, your dad's always. the MVP, and that's always. why he's always got some good luck. Security! Security! Oh, who goes there? Oh, uh, man, I got Blair Walsh right here. Huh? It's Ryan with G, man. All right, all right. You guys are good to go? All right, thanks, Sweet. brother. Yeah. You want to say anything to anybody? Go Hawks, baby. Heck yeah. You know <laughs> what's up. <laughs> see you, buddy. Good to see you. Man, I got, yeah, the full-size candy bars, man. You're, Always. Your dad's a real MVP. Always. Now, who's a better cook, your mom or your dad? Oh, my mom's the cook. She's a, she's amazing when it comes to that. Yeah, she. Thanks. My dad doesn't mess around in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Now Thanksgiving's coming up. What is your favorite Thanksgiving meal? What's your go-to? Like, man, I gotta have it. See, I like all Thanksgiving food, but my favorite's weird. I like the canned cranberry, like canned. Like Whoa! Sliced. Ocean spray? Yeah. Sliced. And we're not talking like yes. chunky. I want the sliced one that literally <sighs> looks like it it came out of the can. Cause it did. Me too. That's my favorite. You ever put that on some cornbread stuff in there? Yes. <laughs> yeah. How about regular cornbread? Oh, man, uh, that's the best. That's I, better than turkey and all the other stuff. Man, I tell you, out of all my interviews, I ain't never told nobody I loved them. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, man. Hey, the cranberry. Oh, Thanksgiving is the best. The best, absolute best. Now, you. How about? How about turkey, man? In your opinion, is turkey overrated? I feel like turkey and chicken are so similar, and you eat them all the time that. Thanksgiving is more about what's around it. So I, I wouldn't say overrated, but not special. All right, I'm going to ask you this last question before we're done with this segment of Driving with G. This is important. Okay. You got two pies. Which one do you pick? Do you pick sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie? Pumpkin. I don't I don't even know if I've ever had sweet potato pie. Yeah. Maybe once. Yeah, pumpkins. Yeah, I don't think of pumpkin. You like sweet potato, don't you? Yeah, I like yeah. sweet potato pie. Okay. But, but you know what I'm going to do? I got my buddy, my buddy Mike Frank. His wife makes the best sweet potato pie. I'm gonna get bring you a sweet potato pie. Do it. I'll I got eat you. it. <laughs> I told you my appetite. I'll eat it. 
Blair Walsh, I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely, bro. Thanks a lot. Yep.